Hi, welcome to Hyperion Hype Club. My name is McKenna and I love the Kingdom Keepers books by Ridley Pearson. Join me as we discuss this series and others published by Disney Hyperion Books. Let's get into it. Hi you guys, welcome to another season of Hyperion Hype Club. We are reading Kingdom Keepers 2, which is Disney at Dawn. And I'm very excited because it um the main park in it is Animal Kingdom, which is my favorite park. But just to catch up first a little. So part of the reason I said that I was gonna take some breaks between the seasons is just to read other books. So like I read um one of the books I read was Dragon Rider by Cornelia Funk. I love the author, but this book wasn't one of my faves. It definitely was for sure going in the donation pile. Um, it was good. I just don't feel the need to ever reread it. I obviously finished the fourth Percy Jackson book and I'm on the fifth one, The Last Olympian, almost done with that. Yeah, that's what I kind of read in between and like just some other stuff, some reading for my internship, which you guys don't need to hear about. Um, okay, I also want to say um, Ridley Pearson has addressed on like Instagram and stuff um, and one podcast that I'll talk about later. Um, he's addressed while there hasn't been a Kingdom Keepers movie or TV series yet. And he's just like, We've tried multiple times and then like the project just never worked out. It's been a few things, but if you want to actually hear more of that, um, you can just go to his Instagram and watch that reel that he made. Um, I also want to take a quick moment to reiterate my idea for the potential villains land and magic kingdom. If you remember Sorcerers of the Magic Kingdom, I never played it, but I kind of get the concept from vlogs and stuff that I've watched. I think it'd be great to have a Kingdom Keepers experience like that in the Villains Land if it's ever built. And on that note, Imagineers have stated that they are aware of the positive fan reaction to the announcement of the Villains Land at the D23 Expo in September 2022. And I'm not sure when this um, episode is going up, but it might be just after um, the 2023 um, D23 Expo, which is September 8th through 10th. Um, and speaking of D23, they announced the Figment meet and greet last year as well, which is supposed to open late summer 2023. Still no opening date announced as of recording this in mid-August. I still think it'll be kind of creepy. Do you guys think it'll be kind of creepy? Because they say it'll be like life size. Was that figment life size or is that people size and like a person in a mascot outfit? I feel I feel like that's what I've heard it's going to be the latter of those two. So I don't know. I guess we will see. Hey guys, I just want to pop in real quick. Um, uh, future me. Hello. I'm recording this on September 9th, which was a big day of announcements at the D23 Expo. Um, so I just figured I would go over some of the announcements for Disney World that kind of piqued my interest a little. Um, obviously, like I mentioned, the Figment meet and greet. So like I said, today's September 9th. They are starting the Figment meet and greet tomorrow, September 10th. Um, and he, he, he clears six feet. He is tall. Um, and he looks kind of creepy. I don't think I would be down to meet him. So just let me know what you guys think, I guess. So Hatbox Ghost is finally coming to Magic Kingdom in late November. They did try to put him in, I believe, at least that's what people said. They were trying to put him in right before Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween parties all started. Um, but that didn't end up happening. Um, okay. Country Bear Jamboree is getting new music. Well, not, like, new, new. They're getting, like, Disney songs, but made, like, real country so to kind of fit their style more. Um, so I think that's going to be neat. They're obviously singing, like, Bear Necessities. That's the one that was in the promo. Um, I do love Country Bear Jamboree as it is, but... I am curious to see what this new one brings. And you can always watch the old one and enjoy it online. So, 
yeah, I'm excited. I hope that the hanging like um antelope heads, like the moose and the other animal bison. I don't know why I said antelope. I don't think that applies to all of them. Um, but I hope that they get rid of their creaking. Like they need a good good oiling for sure to not distract from the show as much but it's also nice to know that they're like still there and they're still doing stuff and interacting and more like reacting to the show um but anyway and then there's gonna be a pirates themed tavern coming to Adventureland. journey of water inspired by moana is opening october 16th um let's see luminous the symphony of us nighttime spectacular is debuting on december 5th I do love Epcot Forever, and hopefully it will always be, like, an intermittent show. I would love that. Um, I have heard someone say that it looks like Luminous might be, like, harmonious without the barges, um, because it sounds kind of like a really similar concept to Harmonious. Um, So I would definitely be interested in seeing if that's true. Like, if they could do like a world of color I know it's kind of hard with the world showcase but maybe they have it going off in like four different four or five different uh, directions or something but like a world of color kind of thing and then have those like the scenes that would play like on the barges on the water I think that would be really cool okay they are reimagining test track finally I so I love for the current test track I love how you can design your own car and you kind of like compete with the others I love trying to make at or like compete with your old cars because I love trying to make like as environmentally friendly a car as possible and just like and once you get off the attraction like that first big screen you can tap and see like if your car is in like the top five most environmental friendly cars of the day or something I love that and then I love the old ride itself so if they could like kind of combine those two I would like it but I'd also like like to see something new they're working of course with their sponsor Chevrolet on that so I'm excited for that um all right so Zootopia is getting a show where it's tough to be a bug it's going to be I do really enjoy It's Tough to Be a Bug. I think it's a great message to put out there. And especially starting from a young age, like bugs, except for grasshoppers, I guess, aren't supposed to be feared. Like you're supposed to respect them. Um, of course, that doesn't stop me from killing cockroaches. Sorry, not sorry. Um, or like the occasional spider. Most of the time I'll just be like, eh, you're fine. I did that one time when there was a brown recluse in my room. Of course, I, you know, my friend and I ended up killing it, but I kind of just let it hang for a while. I, I didn't know what it was, though. <laughs> but I, I didn't, like, knock it off as something not venomous or anything. Um, Yeah. But, I mean, yeah, it's tough to be a bug was going to be replaced eventually because of its hit or miss reputation, um, scaring children and adults. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so I feel like Zootopia is fitting and they, they've been talking about Zootopia stuff for a while. So they were going to put something Zootopia in, they were going to take it stuff to be a bug out. Might as well just swap the two. Um, okay. And then Dino Land being reimagined to the tropical Americas. There was talk about Encanto and Indiana Jones stuff. So Indiana Jones taking over Dinosaur. Mm, I love Dinosaur. Dinosaur is my third favorite Walt Disney World attraction. And, like, I love that it's just, like, no other park has it. Like, come on. Like, California already has Indiana Jones. I think, I want to say, Paris does too. Okay, so Disneyland and Tokyo Disney Sea have indiana jones attractions okay well like can't we be different and have just dinosaur and like a condo like does not fit only like um antonio is it the like kind of birds magical like yeah maybe we'll just have an attraction about him but you know the attraction's not just gonna be about him 
and like Donald's dino bash is gonna go away Chip and Dale might not dress in their dinosaur costumes anymore you guys <laughs> like it's such a good land and it fits the theming so much better and like what's gonna happen to Marley the crocodile and like the uh the what is it Abdeen Storks I think um and like the Asian tortoise like they're not gonna be there anymore I don't want to lose a tortoise maybe they'll go somewhere else like the Discovery Island trails I don't know or they'll just go to another AZA institution or just live in a cool place out of guest site I do mm, I wonder if they'll bring I wonder if the Galapagos tortoises might move that's is that what I mean kind of it's kind of shockful um I'd love to see them get kawadis though after my trip to Guatemala I would love to see kawadis there oh they're so cute um so that'll be a cool addition or like toucans jaguars jaguar undies oh my gosh Disney get jaguar undies please see if you can get in the AZA SSP program for that if they even have an SSP program I don't even know Oh my gosh, ocelots, margays, all the cuties I saw in Guatemala. Oh my gosh, that'll be so cute. All the different kinds of parrots and macaws. Uh, so I, I am excited for to see what animals go over there, I will say. But dinosaur and Donald's dino bash. I'm going to miss them. Who else is going to miss them? My thought is that they're probably going to do like some kind of walkthrough or ride through kind of thing through Casa Madrigal. Um, maybe like I know I was watching Oibi's live stream, that's O I B Y, um, on YouTube. And some we were talking about like he was uh talking through these two, and one person was like they should do kind of like Forbidden Journey style through Casa Madrigal. I was obviously, like I said, thinking, like, walk through, ride through, like, like, just see each person's, like, different rooms. I think that'd be so cool. Um, And my mind was kind of going towards the new, like, Minions attraction at Universal Studios Orlando. Um, I haven't, I haven't really watched the ride throughs of it, um, just because I want to be surprised. But I think it looks like they're on, like, a moving or like from what it sounds like they're on a moving walkway so maybe that kind of thing um so I'll mention like the secret life of pets attraction at Universal Studios Hollywood um so yeah I'm excited well not so much but uh, I'm gonna miss dinosaur I'm gonna ride it so many times before it goes away I will never forget riding it August 2020 before crowds really return and everyone was like spaced out and stuff and I was in the third row um to the far right and then there was like a, a couple in the first row to the far left but it's so dark in there it kind of felt like I was by myself and it was my favorite ride of dinosaur ever I absolutely loved it I have a dinosaur like I don't have many a whole lot of Disney like merch um but uh well <laughs> I have plenty of pins and stuff, but like clothing wise, like I have four ears um, that I've gotten over the past like 10 plus years. Um, and then like, gosh, I got a shirt for Christmas. I have um, a spirit, the Animal Kingdom spirit jersey and I have a dinosaur shirt. And then I have this pigment shirt. I think that's it for like Disney clothes that I own. So like one of the four is a freaking pigment shirt. No. Dinosaur shirt. Um and it's like one that says like vegetarian. Um oh because you don't have to worry about him because he's a vegetarian. Oh. oh my gosh. I'm gonna have to ride it so many times. I hope we get more a decent amount of quality time with that attraction still. Okay, well, I've rambled on long enough. I'll have my wallowing time, I'm sure, sitting on that attraction for the last time. 
of course I don't even know when the last time is going to be because this is all like conceptual and they haven't really said anything about when Dino Land is going to close I'm pretty sure oh well <sighs> I do have two like stuffed animals from the uh like Dino Rama games um and it's like a prehistoric sloth and then um like a and it's like neon green and blue and then a purple dinosaur with like boxing gloves so I call them bada bing and bada boom respectively yeah I'll cherish those although uh, oh maybe next time I'll go I'll try to win some others I'm really only like really good at the whack-a-mole kind of game um that one like I feel confident about you know um so I don't know I'll see what prizes are for that one and then maybe I'll try to win some maybe the water shooter game sometimes I'm not that's hit or miss for me um but the other ones like trickster kind of ones I don't I don't know how much of a trickster one they are at Disneyland Disney World though because like I see so many people walk away with prizes and like Disney's not gonna do them that dirty you know um but yeah um I don't know I'll see what happens but I'll definitely take time to enjoy Dino Land while I can. Oh, Dino Bite Snacks. They have the best vegan ice cream. They literally give you like half a pint and they have vegan waffle cones. I think that's the only place in Disney World with vegan waffle cones. Mm. Yes, please. And my my little sister loves the Restaurantosaurus Lounge. Um, so we went there on my, my last birthday. Um, yeah that was fun um and I love Triceratops spin I think Triceratops spin is better than Dumbo I don't care what you have to say I think I think it has a better view and I think I like the music more but Astro Orbiter is my favorite Dumbo style attraction because it's got that little thrill um anyway I'm going to leave you guys be so we can finally get into the discussion of the first section of Kingdom Keepers Disney at Dawn. Okay, so really Pearson did um an interview for Meant for Moxie. Um the episode is called Ridley Pearson, Disney Freak and Author. I definitely recommend listening to the interview. At least I enjoyed it. Um he shares a great Maleficent story in it. So definitely go check it out. Um, he also mentions in it something that I think is worth noting on this podcast. He thinks the audiobooks for the Kingdom Keeper series are narrated really well. I've never really been one for audiobooks, but, uh, and part of that's like, you know, what if I want to read it in the tone that I am reading it in? And what if the person doing it in the audiobook is kind of reading it in the wrong tone? And I think that's supposed to be the right tone. I don't know. Um, but just hearing him say that he thinks it's the audiobooks are really well done, I definitely say go for the audiobooks if you like those or if you want to give them a try. Okay, so just a few quick things about this book, um, about Disney at Dawn. It came, was published in 2008. Um, and I remember I read when I first read this book. I read the first and the second halves like years apart like well over definitely over five years apart I'm sure um so it's kind of weird going back but I am definitely excited to reread it all in one kind of go this time um also the sketch that is on the page before chapter one Jazz's sketch um I'll de- I'll try to touch on it at the end of every highlights reel section and just be like, oh, this is something we've already seen and then maybe we can put it together. And especially for people who have not read the book before, maybe we can, maybe this will help you guys come up with clues to maybe solve something. I do want to look into the sketch really quick. Let me pull it up. Um. I'm reading this on my very old, no, 
like over a decade old first ebook before the Kindle. It's old. Okay. That's why it's the screen is not backlit. So in the sketch, we see like a bat. We see change Rob written multiple times. Um, we see the word Monday. Um, there's a lightning strike on the castle tower. Uh, some kind of carnivorous animal. Let me see. Harambe. King of the mountain with some mountain peaks right here. Um, I don't know if this is a mask or something. Let's see. Um, someone wearing, I want to say it's a turban. I'm sorry if it's not. Um, this looks like a gorilla. Um, someone carrying a sword, a dinosaur. Um, a girl with a ponytail in her hair. This looks like it might be another carnivore. Um, what is this? A lizard? A lizard face, maybe? Um, anything else? Oh, down here it says vanish under the person with the sword. It looks like there are some teeth right here next to the gorilla. It looks like there's someday written, but spelled S-O-M-E-D-A-E -E, um, with some windows up under it. Um, so yeah, quite a few things to work off of and definitely keep in mind as we read this book. With that stuff being said, first of all, let me know in the comments how excited you are to read or reread this book and if it is your first time reading it or whether you're re rereading it. Um, okay, so for the highlights reel, start out at the DHI day parade the first time the keepers other than finn have been in the same place as their dhis while in their physical all human form if we want to say it that way um other things that are kind of off during the parade there's a mysterious weather balloon despite a storm brewing the tom sawyer's island water is an unusual green and there are monkeys keeping pace with jets and amanda um Ridley Pearson, I feel like, does a good job of recapping to remind readers of the characters and the basic plot points. There has been a software patch um, that has been put into place to prevent crossing over. I know I said crossing over in, during stuff with the first book, but I feel like this is the first time I don't really want to say that they use the term crossover in the book to be like, you know, when the keepers fall asleep, they wake up as their hologram selves. Okay, so then we see that Chernobog was missing from his float. So Chernobog was the main villain in um, Fantasia, the much older movie. And he, Walt Disney has called him like possibly like the most evil or something like that monster ever created Slavic mythology. Okay, but you can see he's kind of like this big bat dude. So just like a really, really bad dude. Okay, so the keepers get off the float to investigate the castle and the weather balloon, quote unquote. Then Finn and Phoebe go up Escher's keep and there's a scabbard dam following them they're like is he security is he working with Wayne they don't know but they're gonna or like security like overtake your security um so they're just gonna assume the worst and say he's overtake your security but we find out that he was working with Wayne but I mean better safe than sorry right and how are they to know um which Wayne also points out this is also a good reminder that Finn can turn into his DHR I form at will for a short period of time and at the moment he's the only keeper who can do that um, at will. So now we see that Jez has been replaced by a hologram and she can dream the future. She's a quote unquote fairly and her and Amanda aren't actually biological sisters. And we kind of get like a little hint that Amanda might be a fairly too, but it hasn't been confirmed yet. She just says a few things that indirectly indicate that so we'll see 
And then Maleficent escapes her penthouse prison via the Tinkerbell fireworks zip line. And then Tink, Finn, and Philby use that to escape too. Finn goes on to I am, and the stranger who turns out to be Wayne asks to video chat with him. So Finn and Wayne's conversation, they talk about Dapper Dan security dude, that Wayne believes that Maleficent is staying in DAC because of attractions there that are kept like chill, like Everest. Um, Wayne suspects that Jez is a fairly. Then they talk about the potential overtaker plan to obtain DHI tech. Um, and wants to turn Wayne into a DHI to mislead efforts against them and perhaps put Wayne into SBS or Sleeping Beauty Syndrome, like what Maybeck experienced when he was trapped inside Space Mountain in Book 1. The Keeper's mission this time is to save Jez and crash the, crash the Overtaker's DHI server before any of them fall asleep. Also, I want to point out at the end of this, Finn still doesn't see himself as the leader that Wayne says he is. So I wonder if there's going to be any development on that front and like when it might eventually happen. I feel like it never really does, at least not like completely, which might be a good thing in a leader, but we'll keep an eye on it. Now let's talk about some things that might be important in Jez's sketch. Okay, so we've obviously seen the lightning bolt strikes in her old castle to help Maleficent escape her prison. And, I mean, Turnabog is kind of this, kind of a bat. So maybe that's what this bat figurine is meant for. Um, I don't know, the girl with the pink ponytail could be, or pink, the blonde looking ponytail could be Charlene. Um, other than that, there hasn't been a whole lot related to this sketch yet. Wayne did mention Everest at one point. Nothing specifically about it, just like Maleficent's being kept or wants to stay in kind of a chilly place in the Animal Kingdom. So he's like, check out Everest. So there are these mountain peaks that I guess correlate with Everest. Can't really think about what snow-capped mountain peaks would be anywhere else in Disney World since the other mountains aren't snow-capped. But yeah, that is the sketch for now. Okay, so I have a lot of like random comments on this section of the book. Um, And honestly, I find these random comments make it more interesting. Definitely not trying to critique anything unless there's any like inconsistency. But I also think it's just like just kind of fun to point out I don't know that's just me okay so during the recap in the beginning they said only the keepers and Wayne knew they crossed over but remember from the first book Brad the engineer knows too also it um says that the programmers had installed a software patch to correct the problem aka the crossing over indicating that they knew about it too there's something else elsewhere I wrote further down in my notes, actually. Oh, okay. It is said in chapter 11 that Wayne leads a secret group of cast members that are that oppose the overtaker's attempt to gain control of the Magic Kingdom. So there are definitely other cast members that know about the Keepers um, crossing over outside of Wayne and Brad. Okay, so let's talk Jez, shall we? All right, so Jez's name is now Jezebel, and not Jess. She went by Jezebel Jez when she went had Maleficent controlling her in the first book. But um, when Finn freed Jess from Maleficent toward the end of the first book, Amanda was like, Jess, you're back. Um, she's like, yeah, I actually go by Jess. It also said at the end of the first book that both the girls, aka Jess and Amanda, have sandy blonde hair and look super similar, like near identical, but not quite. Um, And Amanda's original description also said exotic looking eyes, a deep natural tan, and a few freckles on her cheeks. And now it's saying that both Jez and Amanda have darker hair. And Amanda's also part Asian, part African. At least that's what like her looks give off. So I don't know. I feel like 
sandy blonde hair to part Asian, part African looks is a big stretch. And saying that they both had dark hair, at least for Amanda, obviously it fits her new description, but it definitely doesn't match up with her old description. I do feel like, though, I remember a random detail about Jez dyeing her hair often. So I'm not surprised that her hair isn't isn't her supposed natural color of sandy blonde. But I don't know if I remember that right. But we'll see, I guess, as the books go on. I just wrote it's really a sign of the times when Maybach said AWOL. I feel like it's been a long time since people said that. And it's been a com- common part of our vernacular. Also, I should have gone back in the first book and looked at this. But didn't they make some kind of promise to never be solo? Like maybe after one man's dream or something? I don't know, but maybe... Maybe I should have checked, but if you guys know, let me know. Because literally the first thing they just do after they go off the parade float, one of them, I think Maybeth, was going to go solo. But I think they all end up, like Maybeth, Willa, and Charlene all ended up staying together anyway. But I don't know, whatever. Okay, so any of Keepers were running. And you're not allowed to run in Disney World. I'm looking at you, rope droppers. Like, Disney one doesn't want to get in trouble with anyone. Bust their face. And, I mean, let's be real, though. People will run and cast members don't always try to stop them. But other cast members will try. So just keep that in mind if you don't want to be called out and embarrassed. Um, But seriously, it's just general safety not to run. And they do really ask you not to run. So, like, just don't run. Put on, as Molly from Mammoth Club says, put on your patient pants and just do a very fast speed walk. But do not run. That's just, it's not courteous to run. And it's kind of disrespecting their rules and expectations of letting you inside their park. And it's also not safe. I just wanted to put that in there. As a former cast member who has seen children bust face. Okay. There's also this like random hero line in the first paragraph of chapter eight describing Finn after his two Escher's Keep DHI transformation. It says, faint of head, but not of heart. And I'm like, wow, this is like, they really want to make this an action sequence now. That's what it said to me, at least. Also, keepers are IMing now. Also a sign of the times. I didn't have IM, um, but all my friends at that time had IM. I just didn't really feel the need. I think that's around when I got my own email, though. Um, and I would do, like, Gchat. Woo! I remember, like, sitting with someone at a computer while they were IMing, but... The, let me know in the comments if you were an I am or, or if you are too young for I am. Because maybe you are. Another thing, I would like to track if in each book they say that Wayne looks and or sounds older than they remembered or like since the last time they've seen him. So let's just say the first one, chapter 11 of this book. I feel like it's mentioned multiple times throughout the series. Also, remember how I pointed out that Maybeth was a computer guy in the last book, where I remember it being Philby for the rest. Well, at the end of this first section of the second book, Philby is finally marked as the computer guy, and that is how it will stay. All right, I have two random questions. So in the private room in Virtual Magic Kingdom, Philby and Maybeth push the couch to block the door. I highly doubt that actually worked. From what I remember on webkins and stuff, a webkins could still stand in the doorway after choosing to enter a room or after we choose for them to enter a room. Even if the path was blocked by furniture or if the site glitched and left one of the transportation things like a skateboard or a hot air balloon in the actual doorway. So when it's someone's avatar still be able to enter, stand on the doorway, and read the conversation bubbles 
It also seems that unlike in the first book, you could read speech bubbles anywhere in the room, not just near you. So the virtual couch blockade still wouldn't work then. So I, if anyone listening played Virtual Magic Kingdom, especially the OG one, please let us know in the comments of the YouTube video if this couch blockade would actually work. Okay, and then I just want to say, heck yes, they're going to communicate in the park with their D Nintendo DSs. I love that. What a throwback. I love doing that with friends, just like standing on, in different parts of the house, just um, messaging each other on our DSs, linking up to play games. I just think that was so much fun. And I love that they're doing this here because I'm sure a lot of their fan base doesn't have smartphones, even though smartphones are a thing in 2008. But yeah, I think it's so fun. But, but could they actually chat on their DSs that far apart? I remember you had to be fairly close to people to do that. So I looked it up and they would have to be within 30 meters of each other and some... The range might have been as short as 10 meters. Overall, they would have had to be within 30 meters of each other, meters, meters of each other to communicate unless they had access to Wi-Fi and chatted online, which I presume the parks had Wi-Fi at that time, especially since smartphones were a thing. Um, you had to have a Nintendo DS browser card to use it though, and that was a 2005 release. So it would have been a thing. I never had one of those cards. I kind of just connected to a Wi-Fi. You know what? I do remember sending like an email or some kind of message to my mom through my DS when I was in an airport in Dubai and she was back in America. I just, it, that just popped into my head. I feel like did I actually bring my DS on that trip though? Yes, I did. Because on the way back, they pulled me over at the very tiny airport in the Eastern Cape of South Africa, um, in East London, because they thought my DS was a bomb. <laughs> um, anyway, but I, I don't know. I don't, I feel like they couldn't have communicated across the park, but maybe they could have, and I just didn't have that kind of tool available to me. Thankfully, all of them have that available to them. But yeah, that is where um, this, this section, chapters 1 through 11. Did I say that at the beginning? I don't think I did. Chapters 1 through 11. Oh my gosh, I also should go on my notebook because that has all the sections written down. Let me... The next section of this book will be chapters 12 through 24 there'll be 40 to 50 pages per section and I figure now that we are talking about done talking about the book I would just give a little job update if that's in of any interest to you guys so earlier this week mid-August um I finished my mammals and birds internship at Georgia Aquarium I had an absolutely fantastic time both sub teams within that um mammals and birds team were just fantastic absolutely great i learned a lot in the training modules the sub team i spent my time with um was the african penguins alcids which are like cold water seabirds like puffins and stuff and then the southern sea otters mm. um i'm very sad that it's over but i am staying on at georgia aquarium as a part as a part-time aquarist. I'm very sad that it is over now, but by the time this episode airs, I will have started my part-time position um, with the aquariums, like quarantine acquisitions and like rehabilitation facility. So I'm very excited to see what exactly I will be doing there. I'm very excited to have a permanent job, even if it's part-time, I can go, there's no minimum amount of time I have to work until I can go full-time, but maybe for the meantime, I'll do like a remote part-time job or something. Oh, I'm also 
leaving tomorrow from the day I'm recording this for a uh, solo trip to Guatemala. Wow. I've done a solo trip to Clearwater, Florida, Clearwater Beach. And I've flown solo internationally and then met up with people at my final airport. Um, that's what I was talking about um, in Dubai like five years ago. That flights, that those flights, that was a lot of flights, like 36 hours. I I slept one or two hours during that time. But it was actually kind of like a fun experience, a cool experience. Um, and that was like I flew flew Atlanta to Fort Lauderdale to Dubai to Johannesburg to East London, um, and South Africa, not the UK. Um, and then I did that same route back because so that was just like the cheapest way to get there. Um, but yeah, this is my first time flying solo internationally and doing a vacation in um, solo let alone doing an international vacation solo um so yeah I'm very excited to see how that goes and I'm very excited to keep reading this book once I get back from my trip I will not be bringing another electronic um on my trip I also it is the wet season and I don't want my nook to get wet so I'll probably bring like my copy of To Kill a Mockingbird. I haven't read it. I started reading it once. Um, but I think that's something I could enjoy and read there. So yeah, I guess I will see you guys next week for chapter 12 to 24 of Disney at Dawn. Bye. Thank you guys so much for listening to this episode. Please remember to rate, review, subscribe, and follow. Also, please chat with me and other members of this club in the comments of the YouTube video. My other social media information and a link to the Long Distance Sisters podcast I am also part of will be below. Back in a whack.